Have you recently purchased a new or used vehicle? Or perhaps you're researching for a new or used vehicle, but you're wondering how to set up and use all the technology that we find in a driver's information system and the infotainment screen. If so, you're at the right place. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do just that. But before I do, take a moment to give us a like and hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get started. All right, welcome to our how-to video on the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica, and this is the Pinnacle trim level. And uh, so we're gonna start with the uh, driver's information screen, the dashboard, and then we'll move over to the infotainment screen. Now, um, on the far left, you of course have the RPM gauge. On the far right, you have your speedometer. Just to the right of the RPM gauge, you have your engine temperature, and just to the left of the speedometer, you have your fuel gauge, and those stay there all the time. All right, and uh, you're gonna use these four cursor arrows and the OK button to control all the information in the, the center screen. Now, the center screen is uh, real close to five inches measured uh, diagonally. Uh, so. Uh, as I press, I'm gonna start with a down arrow, and at the very top of the screen, you're gonna see some numbers show up with a description. So number one, two, three, four, and so on. There are a total of nine screens. On some of the screens, you're gonna see little dashes that go across from left to right. That's when you can use your left and right arrows. So let's go back and let's start at screen number one. Screen number one is just your miles per hour, and if I press the OK button, it switches to kilometers. Press it again, switches to miles per hour. Hey, right, let's go to screen two, so I'm gonna hit the down arrow. Now in this one, you have a couple of pages, so you start with uh, tire pressure, and if I go over here, you're gonna get your coolant temperature. Go one more over to the right, you get your transmission temperature. And another bump to the right, you get your oil temperature. Another bump to the right, you get your uh, oil pressure. And then another bump to the right, you get oil life, and one more bump to the right, and we get battery voltage. If you press the right arrow again, it goes back to the first page. All right? Now, if you leave the buttons alone, eventually the screen, all that stuff disappears, and this is what you get on every single gauge. Okay, so let's go to screen number three. I'm gonna press the down arrow here. Driver assist. So this is where your lane keeping assist will show up. Uh, Chrysler, I believe, calls it Lane Sense, but uh, it's a lane keeping assist system. So uh, if you get too close to the right or left lines, it'll light up in orange. And the steering wheel, if it senses you're going to cross a line, moves the steering wheel automatically, just gently. You can, of course, override it with your hands if you want. On the far right side of the steering wheel, you have your adaptive cruise. This is the lower button. And if I turn that off, uh, then you get just a lane keeping system. If I press it again, it comes on. Now you have another cruise control button on the right, and this is your standard cruise control. So if I, right now I'm in adaptive, so if I press the regular, it just turns off the adaptive. If I press it again, I get standard cruise control, and I still get the lane keeping assist up there. Okay, so you got those two different buttons. Now, I'm gonna go back to adaptive cruise control, so I'm gonna press it once to turn the regular cruise control off, press it again to uh, put the adaptive on, and then you can see the gap setting buttons uh, change up there. Now you'll notice on the far right corner, there's a little uh, picture of a car and you can see the gap setting um, change as I change the gaps here. Uh, that will always stay on, even if you're not in this screen. Okay, so let's go down to screen number four. This is your fuel economy screen. And in the first window here, all you get is your uh, average miles per gallon. Okay, that's the blue line, and then you get a range that's just over on the, the far left. If I press the right arrow, I get a, a similar looking gauge, but this time, not only am I gonna get my average miles per gallon, but I'm gonna get my current miles per gallon. That'll show up outside the blue line, it'll be a green line, okay? And then if I press it once more, it kind of switches those two. So now the blue line is your current miles per gallon, and the, what would be the what would will be the green line when you're driving will give you your average miles per gallon. So three different ways to look at your fuel economy. I'm going to press the down arrow again. Go to screen five. This is your trip info. And basically, you have trip A here, and then if I press the right arrow, you get trip B. 
All right, I'm gonna press the down arrow again. Screen six, okay, this is, it says start, stop, not ready, because the, uh, that's the auto start, stop system, because the, right now we have, it's warm up, we have the air conditioning running, okay? But as you're driving, if you um, scroll to that screen, it's, gonna, it's just gonna say ready. It'll say stop, start, ready. And that just means when you come to a stop at a stoplight, the engine is going to shut off for a while. And there is a physical button that we'll show you when we do uh, the full review uh, where you can shut that off manually. Let's use the down arrow and go to the next screen, screen number seven. This is where your audio shows up. Okay. Now, uh, as usual on Chrysler vehicles, you have controls that are directly behind the steering wheel. You've got, uh, basically it's a long button, you've got a little indention on the top, you got a little indention on the bottom, this is your volume on the right side, okay? And then if you push the middle button, that changes your sources. Over here on the left side of the steering wheel on the back, it has the same setup, so it's got two little in indentions you can press, up, kind of down or up, and then you got a middle button. Now the down and up is kind of like a scan, and then the middle button is your favorites that you've preset. Okay, and then you can, of course, see what you're what you're listening to right here. Now, I'm going to go down one more. Uh, if you have any messages that come in from the vehicle, like uh, time to change oil or something like that, um, those will will pop up in there. Now, they will pop up automatically, uh, and you can set that through the infotainment screen just to warn you, and then they'll disappear. But if you want to say, hmm, what was that message? You can go to that screen and check. Okay, I'm going to use a down arrow and go again. Now, this is the last screen, and this is where you can change some of the things. So I'm going to press the OK button, and I can change the uh, odometer. I can change the upper screen. Uh, I can change the left lower screen or the right lower screen. And then, of course, I can reset everything to, to defaults if I want to. So I'm going to go down to odometer, and you can see where it highlighted in white. And I'm going to press the OK button. And I have my choices to show, or if it goes to hide, I press the OK button, and my odometer has disappeared. Hey, okay, obviously, I want that, so I'm going to click that again. I'm going to go use the down arrow to go to show click the OK button again, and now the odometer is showing. So let's take a look at the upper center. Now again, it highlights it for you in white so you know what area of the screen you're working on. Press the OK button, and you can have several things. Um, you can have uh, the menu title, and if I click that, okay, then the, the, um, the menu, you can see it says screen setup, so that's what we're on. So it'll just tell you what screen you're on. Okay, I can, I'm gonna go back to press the OK button again because the menu disappears after you press OK. I can have digital speed. I can have nothing. I can have a compass up there. I can have the outside temp. I can have time. I can have range. Average miles per gallon. Current miles per gallon. Trip A trip B or audio so you can decide what's most important for you to have up there okay now I'm going to use the left button to exit this and I'm going to go down to the lower left and again it highlights it over there on the left by the uh, compass I'm going to press OK and basically you're going to have the same choices as you did in the top so you can have a compass outside temp time, range, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, trip A, trip B, nothing, okay? I'm gonna hit the left arrow to go back again. I'm gonna go the down arrow to go to the lower right. I'm gonna click OK. And again, I can set that to range, uh, average miles per gallon, current miles per gallon, trip A, trip B, nothing, a compass, outside temp, time, and then I'm back to range. I'm going to press the left arrow again to go back. You can always go down to defaults and set that. All right, so I'm going to use the left arrow here to exit out. Okay, and then if I press my down button again, I go from screen nine to screen one. 
All right, and so that is the driver's information screen. Next, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so the infotainment screen is a, a 10 inch screen. Uh, it has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, AM and FM radio, Bluetooth, of course, as voice command, this this particular trim comes with navigation built in. It does have a 4G uh, LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, and uh, you can also um, add Alexa to it. Now, um, at the as far as this, uh, the sound goes, this is a well, uh, 20 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, and, and the 20th speaker is the subwoofer. There's a 10 inch subwoofer. Okay, on the screen. This top line here is customizable, okay? This, this side, there's one, two, three, four areas, and a fifth area, so you can add five different commonly used things right there. You do have a climate control on both sides right there, and then this screen, the home screen, is also customizable as to what appears here, what appears here, and what appears here. What isn't customizable is um, you can't put these two screens over here or move the screens. You can customize this size, this size, and this size. Okay, at the bottom, these icons pretty much stay here all the time. There is a way to get rid of all the text that's underneath them, and that shrinks the line down a little bit, giving you a little bit more screen. Uh, and I'll show you that uh, later. So let's start at the top. First of all, to make it easy uh, to control the climate from the screen, if you want to do that, you click on it. And then you have a slider to change the temperature. You have a sync button. This is the only place the sync button exists is in the screen. You do have your um, ventilated seats. So you can turn that on here, two stage, one stage and off. You have your heated steering wheel button right here. And then of course you have your two stage heated seats right there. Now the passenger side is exactly the same without the steering wheel. At the top, I said you could customize these buttons. There's one that's not even uh, existing right here. So there, there's these four buttons plus this one. To do that, you're just going to tap right under the clock right here. Um, first of all, I'm going to click this and I'm going to drag it off. You see how it disappears? So I'm taking all of them out. And then I'm going to say, you know, I want that uh, the surround view camera. This is the exterior cameras. I want those right there. I also want the family camera. I want that one. Well, it's, it's already there. So let's say that I want, okay, uh, profiles to be next. I can slide that up there. Um, let's say I want uh, outside temperature to be next. And then I want maybe notifications. So you can customize those buttons and that's how you do it. Okay, I'm gonna hit the home button again. Okay, that takes care of the, what you can do on the top. Now the middle part you can customize as well. And how to customize that is by clicking on the pencil that's in the far right hand corner. You can only do this when you're stopping in a park. All right, so if I click this, these are the widgets that I can select to put in there. So let's say I want my climate there. There's my climate. And that that's, will always be on your home screen. Okay, let's say uh, I want to customize this when I click on the pencil. Basically the same things. I, I can also just remove a widget, uh, but let's say I want um, navigation. Okay, it, you know, it doesn't work so well in that little window because you don't see the map, but you can you can put anything there. Um, what I have done is uh, having the, the car, I've, I've put my seats up there. So I can turn on my, my heat or my ventilated seats easily. Okay, and then down here, it just bumped that one down that I had. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say, now playing. So now it's my media. So this allows you to access things really quickly. Now, personally, I, I, I've kept this one on navigation because I just like that. You can see uh, your, uh, your course right there. But anyways, that is how you adjust those and change them. You can also click on this little square with the arrow to enlarge any of them to full screen. Let me see, I click that again there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna press home again. Click this one. Okay, and if I press home and click this one, 
Okay, there we go. So that's how you customize that. These buttons down here stay all the time. So we've seen home. Let's go to media. You're going to notice that anytime you click on these, you get a little drop down arrow. If I click on that, I get a little extra sources right here. I've got uh, Sirius XM and FM radio if I want to go to those. Okay. So here, here's my uh, Sirius XM radio. And of course, you can click here to uh, store a favorite if you are to, you know, to get a favorite if you want. You can also just change the channels right here. Okay. And if I, let's say I hit one of those, okay goes right there. If I want to type in a number, I just click right there and I can tap in a station or a, a number and it will go to that. Okay. Press media again and we'll go back. You do get your your, your sort of like uh, your most commonly used ones right up here, your sources. Let's talk about how you would save a, a preset. So we've got this one. You have to go to a blank screen. So I'm going to keep going here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press and hold, okay? Now it's, it gives you that warning message, which is weird, but then it saves it for you. So I don't know if that's a glitch in the software or what, but it does save it and that, that's how you do it. If you wanna see all your presets, you click on all presets, and then you can change the number that actually show up. Now, um, up at the top, you've got some menus. So sources gives you all of your sources. So it's more than the list here. And this doesn't scroll. So you, you just have what's there. But you can switch, you know, of course, your AM radio. You do have an auxiliary 3.5 millimeter jack down below you can plug in. And you have a USB 1 and 2, of course, Apple CarPlay, uh, Bluetooth, uh, and Sirius XM. All right. If I want to see what's playing, just click there. If I want to browse, okay. Then I can browse music for whatever source that I'm in here. Um, these are suggestions for me, uh, just music, sports, news, and that kind of stuff. You can split the arrow and see more, All right? If I go over to audio settings, this is where I can change the balance and fade, and this is draggable, okay? Or you can use the cursor arrows to do it incrementally. I can go to the equalizer and I can either use my finger to adjust or I can use the plus and minus to do it, adjust. It has speed adjusted volume. Right here you can turn surround sound on or off. I click the arrow. You can also have audio radio turned on. So that's when you get in the car and start it, it automatically brings up the radio. If you don't like that, this is where you turn that off volume adjustment now here you have a couple of things so you have your your media and right now it says zero because i have it turned down um so you probably don't need to worry about setting that one but you can adjust the volume of your phone the volume of the navigation prompts and of course the voice recognition system the, like the voice command okay so uh now right here and we'll go over this in another video, but this is where you control the rear seat screens, and we will uh, do that in a cover that all in a separate video. Okay, so let's go to FM for a minute, and you're gonna notice it's set up the same way as Sirius XM. You press and hold to save, you can go through channels, you can type in an individual uh, numbers for a station. Okay, and if I go back to sources again and I go to AM radio, again, it's set up the same way. And then, you, of course, in the radio, FM and AM, you have the HD button, which you can turn on or off to get HD radio. Okay, let's move on to comfort. Comfort is just your uh, climate control, and all of your buttons are physical down on the center console, but you can do them digitally here as well. The only thing that you don't have down below is the sync button. For that, you need to have it in the screen, uh, right here. All right, let's go over to navigation. Now, this uses TomTom Tom software for the navigation. We, we've we used it this week. Uh, it's worked just fine. It's been uh, pretty easy to plot a course. So to do that, you can just hit search, and then you can type in your address. You can also look at POIs, points of interest. So if I click on gas stations, it's going to list gas stations near us. And then I can just click on it and go. Okay. I'm going to X out of that for a minute. Go back to uh, search here. Um, and I can do, um, 
I can make something a favorite. So that's the other thing I want to show you. So if you go somewhere often, you can just make it a favorite and you can say, you know, you just add it, it'll just show up right in here. So it's a nice way to quickly get to um, the, the things that you commonly go to. Okay. Now, um, to get to your favorites, you can just click on this button here and click on favorites. And there you go. So this button just changes the appearance of the screen, depending on what you, how you like your navigation set. This will mute and give you alerts only, or mute it completely, or on. So it'll talk to you when there's a turn. And then this button that I showed you earlier, um, this is where you can add like home, add work, look at recent trips. Uh, um, you can take a look at uh, maps here, and of course, this will have North America, but you can get other maps in there if you want. Uh, settings. So if you want to make some like once once in your life changes to your navigation system, this is where you would do it. So the map view, okay? Um, you can auto map zoom, okay? Zoom in, add instructions, zoom based on road type or no auto zoom. Auto zoom is nice because as you approach a turn, it brings it up closer in the screen so you can see your turn better. So you know, probably be good to leave that one on. I'm gonna hit that back arrow again. Routing. So on routing, I can say, what's my preferred type of route? Fastest, shortest, or eco-friendly? And you just click on that to select it. Um, you can pick things to avoid. On paved roads, carpool, lanes, interstate highways. And all you gotta do is just click on it. And there's a few more, there's at least one more under there. Okay, so this is where you will find all of those uh, settings for your navigation. Okay, sounds and alerts, okay? Um, you can have a camera alert, so if there's a camera system checking speed and then it knows of, it'll warn you. Safety warnings, it can warn you when you're speeding, because it does, it does read the signs, but it only shows them to you and it just knows that you're going faster or slower or at speed. And if you're going a little bit faster, there's a little yellow icon that'll show up next to the, the speed limit sign, and if you're going several miles an hour over, it'll turn red. Uh, but that's all it does. The, the adaptive cruise control does not read uh, speed limit signs, so it doesn't change. All right, so that's where all the settings are. So let's go back here. Let's go to CarPlay for a minute. All right, so Apple CarPlay, uh, if you choose to use that, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it automatically reverts to this when you use your phone. Uh, doesn't use the Bluetooth, okay? So you have all of these apps right here from your phone that will work right in uh, your screen. So you can control your phone from your screen. So if you want to plot a course in Google Maps, you don't even need the built-in navigation, you can use Google Maps. Now if I go, this is where I start, if I go one more, then you get a split screen. So now I've got my navigation uh, and I've got what's playing, and of course I can click on there and, and then it will allow me to voice command the map. Okay, and that's of course your go button for uh, telling you to start the course. So that's Apple CarPlay. If I click on this little arrow, I can go to Device Manager or launch Uconnect Phone. Let's go to Vehicle. Now under Vehicle, you notice you don't have any of that, that down arrow at all, but what you do have is your buttons to, you have controls and you have settings. Under the controls, you can fold the headrest in the back, you can turn on the surround camera, but we've already put that up here, and you can turn on the fan cam, which I'll show you, and that we've already put up over here on the passenger side. All right? If I go to settings, now I get a few more things. So here is uh, your display. Uh, right now it's on auto, but if you turn it to manual, these things light up and you can change the brightness or dimness, okay? With the headlights on or the headlights off. I'm gonna leave it on auto. You can have the touchscreen beep on or off. Right now I have it, right now I have it uh, off. You, this is where you can change all of your units, okay? Tire, different kinds of tire pressure, distance, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, if I go down to safety and driving assistance, this is where a lot of your uh, settings for your uh, safety systems are. For instance, automatic emergency braking. Okay, 
in a, in a situation where you have a forward collision warning, it's going to warn and actively help brake. Um, you can have that off or only warning or the setting where it's on now. Forward collision sensitivity, near, medium, or far away. So the farther you, you, you if you click far, it's going to have that, that collision sensitivity is going to go up. It's going to be higher, so it's going to alert more. Um, if you turn it to near, it's going to wait till you're much closer to having a collision before it warns you. Pedestrian emergency braking, you can have that off or you can have warning and active braking. All right, so uh, these work the same way. Uh, this one, you just it's an on-screen click, so you can go between medium and late and early. Uh, lane sense strength, you can figure, you can set that. Park sense, okay, so this has uh, parking sensors front and rear, and you can say I want sound only or sound and display. And, it, and I like it on sound and display because not only does it give you a beep, but on your um, driver's information screen, it'll actually show you which side of your car is beeping on. Brakes. Auto park brake. Okay, I I, um, I have that off. I tried it. Neither one of us liked that. Uh, but it's there if you want it. So what this does, if you click it on, the minute you put it, put it into park, it automatically sets the parking brake, which means when you go to put it in gear, you're going to have to physically push the uh, parking brake button to release it. Okay, system information, in the case you completely mess up, there is a reset button there where you can reset things to the factory defaults. So that's vehicle. If I go over to apps here, um, there's favorites, recent, categories, and all. So basically, what this is designed to do is take all of the apps in the car and show them to you on the all screen. You can search them by categories if you want to do that here, media, comfort, nav, phone, okay? Or you can look at the most recently used, okay? But what the neat feature on this is, you see these things are solid white stars, that's because I've clicked on them. So if I go there and I click on the star, it turns white. Now you gotta get the star clicked just right or it actually goes into audio settings. But now, Anything that I use most commonly, I can go through here and say, which one of these do I really use a lot? And then once I've uh, clicked on the star, those things show up in favorites. All right, so some of the neat things that has this thing has on, it's got the fan cam. So let's go up here and click on the fan cam. And th this is really cool. So there's Rob in the back. But you can click on a seat and you can zoom in on it. And, and uh, I, I just think that is really, really neat. I can click on any seat and I can zoom in on that person just like that. So that is a really, really neat uh, system. And that's a, a, it's up in the ceiling behind the second and third row seats. Click the X to get out of it. All right, I'm going to click on this one here to get the camera. So this does, of course, have dynamic swivel guidelines. Right now it's showing us the rear camera. All right, if I click this, I get a little wider view. If I click this one, I get a front wide view and a front narrow view. And then I get um, kind of the straight back view here. And then I can magnify, this is like a hitch view right here. So I can uh, line up with the trailer. And you see how that swivels. Um, I, I like that. So we'll X out of there. Um, but the, the nice thing is when you're pulling into a parking lot and you're in drive, if you click this, it's going to bring that camera up right away and it's automatically going to give you the front camera because you're in drive. So I, I told you there is a way to take these this text off of here. So to do that, you go to vehicle, you would go to display, and you would scroll down until you get to show main category bar labels. If I click that, they all disappear. All right, that's it for the infotainment screen. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. If you want to uh, see how to operate the, the rear entertainment screen, we have another video that's on that. Look in the list below, and uh, we'll show you how to run that. All right, hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.